today we're going to be talking about building Space Marine character models for a little bit cheaper than Games Workshop sells them. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. This video represents a little bit of a step forward with the channel as it is, as for the first time we've got some actual miniatures that have painted in the background rather than just Games Workshop's stock art. I've bought a fairly nice light box with the Patreon money to make these pictures happen a little bit. At the moment they are just shot on my phone and I will be experimenting with a digital camera that I have as well. I must admit that the light box does work really well for photographing miniatures, it's far better than anything that I've used in the past, and I'll try and improve the photo shooting skills as we go along. With all that being said though, today I just wanted to do a quick video talking a bit about Space Marine character models and how to get them for a bit more value for money in a Space Marine army. Now I'm personally quite of the opinion that for the majority of Games Workshop character models they're really just not very good value for money in terms of pound or dollar invested for the amount of cool miniatures that you get out of them. I'll admit that some of the recent sculpts are very nice indeed, in particular some of their new Primaris character range, but a lot of their older style Space Marine character kits just really aren't significant departures from the mainstay of their model line. So when I wanted a few extra librarians and smash captains, I wanted to look for a way that made some fairly convincing ones without having to pay something like 15 to 20 pounds per miniature. Indeed, Space Marine smash captains, that's a captain with a jump pack and some sort of fighty close combat weapon such as a thunder hammer, are pretty problematic to obtain in a normal way just because Games Workshop doesn't sell a generic captain kit that has a jump pack and a bunch of options. So rather than buying quite a few individual character kits, I decided to convert my own, but I didn't really have quite enough parts in the bits box to make marines who look suitably ornate enough to be captains, or with books and hoods and things to be librarians. So one of the things that Games Workshop sold that caught my eye was the Dark Angels Veterans Kit. I think that in terms of kit bashing characters, these really are an absolute gem, as I feel that quite a lot of the time, the main thing that distinguishes a commanding officer from the rest of the marines is that they have some robes and things on them, or just have some interesting and funky ornate bits of armour and some baroque style power weapons. The Dark Angels Veterans Kit is about the same sort of price as one character, maybe a little bit more than some of the cheaper ones, but of course you get five marine bodies in this, and a whole ton of slightly ornate parts and various different close combat weapons, which you can put together with any other things that you already have in your collection to make some really quite convincing characters. Just by having a robed body, some more ornate weapons and a backpack, it really does make it quite obvious who is the captain compared with your standard marines, and having so many parts available allows you to be quite flexible in exactly what sort of loadout you want to give them. If you are making some librarians as well, then this kit is absolutely awesome as well. A robe space marine with a hood and a power axe or something, running alongside your standard marines with the appropriate paint job, is really obviously going to stand out as a librarian, and you can further augment that with choosing some of the other specific parts that look a bit more librarian-y out of this kit. Now don't get me wrong, they do have some Dark Angels iconography on there, though there are plenty of pieces that are pretty non-specific, and you can opt to try and use those in preference. You could potentially remove particularly obvious bits with a craft knife, and to be honest, at the end of the day, a winged sword isn't all that out of place in most space marine armies, provided they're not absolutely everywhere denoting them as Dark Angels, then I think the vast majority of people aren't going to notice this in-game, particularly if your marines are painted in the same style as the best of your chapter. The other kit that I highly recommend for kit bashing captains are the Blood Angels Death Company. Now my own Space Marine chapter certainly has some Blood Angels tendencies going on, and they're the army that have run the most most frequently over the years. That means that I'm really not too bothered about the Blood Angels iconography, which is fairly prevalent on the Death Company Marines, but again, I think on ornate characters, particularly if it's mixed with the Dark Angels bits, it's not going to be too obtrusive. Their winged gems will blend in pretty well when they're painted in your own chapter's colour scheme. Death Company are great for getting things like Thunder Hammers and Jump Packs, exactly what your Smash Captains are going to want, as well as a few fancy ornate Power Swords and Power Fists, should you want to go that way. I do quite like the legs on these ones as well for Smash Captains, as they're a bit more dynamic than the more static pose Dark Angels, and for Jump Pack characters is a bit more fitting, should they be coming down out of the sky. So in terms of the actual Smash Captains that are made, I started with this guy on the left here, who's got a Thunder Hammer that's glued in and the Bolt Pistol's magnetised. I think that that helm is either from the Death Company or a Sanguinary Guard kit, I think. And the Jump Pack is just from a standard Assault Marine kit, which is absolutely another very valid way of acquiring Jump Packs. The chap in the middle is also sporting a rose body, and he's got some fancy shoulder pads from the Dark Angels kit, and I use a combat shield as a storm shield here, with a nice little bit of eagle-related freehand on it. He's got a chainsword at the moment, which could represent the teeth of terror or something, but again, it's magnetised and can be swapped out. With the last one, I think I was running out a little bit of the most blingy parts on the kits, so he's a little bit more plain, but still that robed body really helps set him out as a fighty character. Just if you're interested, here's what they look like with the small magnets in the wrists, meaning that you can customise their loadout pretty heavily, and you can even take the jump pack on and off the one on the right, because I went a bit mad with magnetising. 
by keeping all the polarities the same, it means that they've acquired quite a lot of different upgrades that they can be run with, and they can all be given Thunder Hammers and Storm Shields, for example, should I want to run them that way. Just to take a quick look at the librarians now. For these guys, I've got two armed with power axes. The guy on the left has a book, which I believe was from that Dark Angels kit. And of course, they both very much have robes and hoods from that same kit. The Eagle backpack, I believe, is from the Space Marine Commander kit, as for some reason I have one of those hanging around. And the one with the sword and candles on the right, that one is from the Dark Angels kit. They also both seem to have melt bombs as well. I believe that was from when they could be run that way in 7th edition. In general, I find these conversion type builds to be quite good fun, and people tend to react quite positively to seeing interesting converted miniatures on the battlefield, even if part of the real reason that they were done was to save a bit of money. I do feel that it might be a little bit harder to achieve on the Primaris models as the range is at the moment, as a lot of the kits tend to be quite unique and different, and as of yet at least, we don't have any sort of standard veteran Primaris kits. Hopefully if Games Workshop does release a nice multi-part kit like that, then I'll certainly be kit bashing Primaris characters again all over the shop. So thanks for watching a slightly more experimental one with some actual photography going on. I think I will have to do a little bit more experimenting, as as you can tell some of those photos came out a lot better, some of them I was easily completely able to remove the backgrounds, and other ones have that weird grey effect going on behind them. Hopefully it's something that I'll get a little bit better at. If you've got any other tips for economising or good kits for kit bashing characters, then please let us know down in the description. It's always good to save a little bit of money as and when it makes sense. If you are thinking about buying any 40k in the near future and you'd like to help support the channel, I'd just like to mention the affiliate links that I have down in the description below. There's one for Element Games, the discount retailer in the UK, and for Amazon, who stock most 40k products in the US. If you give one of those links a click before making a purchase, then a little bit of the money goes to support Auspets Tactics without costing you any extra at all, so it can be a nice way to support the channel if you were thinking of buying something anyway. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.